My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 4,340 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of Aspen Now without your express consent. All right, everyone, today we are going to uncover some of the mysteries behind SLAs. Over the past, I don't know, three, four years, there's been several questions that have come in and finally I said you know what time to put them all together and put them in a video okay so the first one that's most common is my SLA won't fire what should I check all right so first off we can take a look at an SLA in the platform now remember to get to the SLA definitions we can type in law def under service level management we'll see our SLA definitions in my instance here, I also have SLA definitions under service portfolio management. Same thing, it's going to the same table. You'll notice up here is the contract SLA table. Uh, here's a great example of one that won't fire under certain cir circumstances. So if we look at uh, the active box, it is checked. So it is active, it's running on the incident table. It's a response SLA. Uh, we have a duration of 10 minutes. It's like schedule is good. Now let's take a look at our condition. So the reason why this one won't fire, and I'm gonna demo it in just a second, could be a couple of reasons. Take a look at the start condition. Nothing complicated here. We're just saying active is true, priority is not one. Let's take a look at the cancel condition, which is start conditions are not met. This means that each line item within the start condition must be true in order for this SLA not to cancel. Sometimes the cancel condition can prevent the SLA definition from firing. That's not the reason this one's not going to fire, and we'll take a look in a second. So I'm going to create uh, a copy of this incident here. Fill in the caller. I'll put in our assigned to, and I'll click save. Okay, scroll down to the task SLA table. We have this JM retroactive SLA definition, but we don't have this response SLA not firing definition firing. Now the reason why is if we go to our stop condition, we'll see here assigned to is not empty. Now the issue is this, is that the assigned to currently is not empty. So if it meets the stop condition, it won't fire. I know that there's a lot of organizations out there who implement SLAs that way and they just assign it at the group level, but I've seen it where they'll assign, not only assign it at the group level, but they'll assign it to an individual and then that SLA won't fire later on the last why it didn't fire. Well, that's why. So that's one example of why it wouldn't fire. Now if I take out the assigned to, same incident, hit save. right here it fired so that's one way that we could tell you know if it didn't fire it would be to look at all the conditions my SLA won't stop what should I check okay that's a that's another great question <laughs> in this example here we'll see we have active is false and state is one of resolve canceled closed Remember that when we construct it this way, both of these have to be true. Now, what do we know about this state here, resolved? Resolve technically is an active state. So we have to keep that in mind that active won't be false when we put it into resolved. So what we can do is go back to our incident here. We'll see this SLA fired. Now I'll put it in resolved. Okay, so now it's resolved and right here we'll see this is still in progress so it's going to have to wait until it gets into a closed state for this to close because that's the point at which it will become inactive we'll see here our incident has been resolved but the sla definition hasn't stopped just yet so what does that mean it means we're gonna have to wait until it gets to closed because closed or canceled are inactive states so now if i come back here permanently closed great 
So now we'll see here it's completed. I see duplicates in the incident SLA table. How can I get rid of them? If you don't know what the incident SLA table is, it's a database view. And what this allows us to do is perform reporting on not only the SLA task SLA table, but the incident table. You probably recall, I don't know, maybe a year ago, I performed a video on how to create a database view between your SLA table and you know your extended task table. You can go out there and take a look at that. But basically what this allows us to do, this incident SLA table, is do reporting on both the incident attributes and the attributes coming from the task SLA table. One thing you'll notice when I open up this personalized list columns is that some of these will have parentheses for fields like created and created by because it's taking the created and created by from each of the tables and putting them into one list. So that's basically what, what this table does. So really you don't have duplicates. If I filter out on what we would call the parent record or the incident in this case, we'll see here we have four SLAs that have fired on this one incident. So when you're performing reporting, you probably want to filter out the SLA definition by something like type or target for your response versus your resolution. So here you'll see just the two responses showed up and then you can put in other things, other attributes like the business duration. And we could even take all this stu stuff and put it in here and then perform reports from here. Uh, from the table view. If we want to, we could even configure the list calculations, maybe do an average value on some of these. And it just depends on, you know, what the requirements are for your organization. Uh, we could also uh, do uh, some charts from the table view too. What does the flow slash workflow control within the SLA definition? Great question. Let's take a look at an SLA definition. You'll see here the field called flow. In previous versions of ServiceNow, there was a field called workflow. I believe they're trying to phase that out, so everything's running off of flow design or flows right now. So if we take a look at this default flow for SLAs, what we'll see here is it's basically just triggering events. Those events, when they are triggered, send a notification. The notification is not here in the flow, but this is the example of first one here for the 50%. So what's happening is 50% of the duration expires, it triggers the event, and then these parameters are set within the event that's created. So they're creating an event record. Uh, if you didn't know that you could create events this way, you also learned that too today, go ahead and click like or comment that you learned something. Here we're going to put in our, the name of the event and then our parameters like the assigned to. Notice that this is coming off the task table, not the incident table and then uh, we have our table name also. So it just goes through the process, 75%, and then there's the breach notification, looks like it's going to the manager. That's pretty much it for the flow. It in no way affects how the SLA is triggered or if it is triggered. You don't have to have one in there, that's why that field, if we take a look here at the SLA definition, is not mandatory, you don't need to have one. If your customer were to ask you, hey, can you turn off those annoying notifications that tell wh whomever it is the assigned to, this thing's about to breach, then you could just take this flow out of here if you want all of them to go away. If you just wanted a couple of those notifications to fire or the events to fire, you can make a copy of this. You just copy the flow, then you could deactivate whatever you want, save it, and then change the flow name here. But that's all the flow does. It in no way affects how these things are triggered and it doesn't trigger any sort of calculation process. That, that's a, a totally separate part of the platform. I believe that answers that question. If you have any others, go ahead and post it in the comments. The SLA duration and the SLA definition is wrong. How do I correct it? Well, let's take a look at an SLA definition right here. We'll see here. Five business days is what's intended for this resolution SLA definition. But over here, the duration says one day, 21 hours. Why does it do that? Well, if we take a look at our schedule here, one day is defined as what? Eight to five. That is nine hours. 
I times 5 is 45 hours. So let's just go with that and put in 0 days, 45 hours. Then we click Save. And you're going to see it change because it's going to go to days, which is the highest value unit that we have here displayed. One way we can explain this is to talk our client through it and say one day is 24 hours plus the 21 hours. Now, you can do that or you can do what I like to do, which is add this little attribute right here to the duration field, which is max unit equals hours. We hit save and then update our SLA definition. We'll now see it in terms of hours. The reason I like to do that is because it's easier to walk customers through it. And a lot of times the customers are not gonna bring this up until later on after you go live. And generally you won't have time at that point because you'll be busy doing other things. So they'll cry foul and say, hey, you didn't set these up correctly. Even if you did make a mistake, you can always run SLA repair if you adjust the duration and it'll calculate the new value versus however long it took to complete that task. So leave that answered that question. Can't find a table in the drop down the SLA definition form. What does that mean? So the scenario kind of runs like this. Right now we're using incident, but let's say we open this up and we do not find a table in here. What that means is the table that you're trying to run the SLAs on does not extend the task table. Therefore, you cannot run SLAs on it. And that's one of the things I talk about uh, when you're creating, especially custom applications, to think through that. Because if you don't extend the task table, you're not gonna be able to run SLAs. How can I add conditions based on data from other tables? This is also referred to as dot walking. So let's just say our customer wanted a SLA definition constructed based off a configuration item class. So if we take a look at the configuration item field, it's a reference field that refers to the CMDB CI table. Now we'll notice here that we have a column or field called class. We have service, software, there are probably a couple other options within this field. At this point, we want to construct the definition that says class is software within our definition. Okay, so let's take a look at this SLA definition that's based on CI class. We have here a configuration item dot class. I'm going to recreate this condition to show you how to do it. If I type in configuration item, we'll see here class doesn't show up. In order to get it to appear, so we can dot walk, type in configuration item, and then the fields will pop up. I hit enter, then type in class. This appears to be a choice field or a string. That's disguised as a choice, as I like to refer to it as. And basically we have the same, it says only class here, but when we hit save, we'll notice that it appears exactly the same. Wait for our start conditions to pop up. Let's test out that SLA definition. As we can see here, in my recent selections, I have two configuration items. One as a class of service, the other one of software. The SLA definition is pointing to software. We'll go ahead and save. Make sure the SLA definition fires. The name of the definition is JM-BusinessDays dash CI class, we're down to the related list. Looks like it's in progress. Remember our cancel condition is start conditions are not met. What does that mean? If any one of these is off, it will cancel. So let's change the configuration item to the Apache web hosting service. This has a class of service, so it will cancel the definition wanted to note that and there we have the stage is now canceled and that should answer that question if you feel that didn't answer a question go ahead and post a comment if it did go ahead and click like
Thank you for watching today's video. Click like if you learned something and don't forget to subscribe. My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Solutions, and we've just unlocked the power of ServiceNow.